Hey, what's up my chemistry people? It is Mr. Boylan. As we look at problem number eight, it says use the data regarding the standard enthalpies of formation to calculate the enthalpy change for the following reaction. Boom, we're given a balanced chemical equation, and then boom, we're given this chart that lists out a bunch of these enthalpies of formation. So this is just a formula and then plug and chug. The formula we're gonna use is enthalpy change of the reaction is equal to the sum of the enthalpies of formation of your products minus the sum of the enthalpies of formation of your reactants. Okay, so let's do this. Okay, so as you take a look, we're gonna start with our products here. Uh, we've got six moles of CO2. We're gonna multiply that by the number three negative 393.5. Notice that the heats of formation are given to us in kilojoules per mole, and since we have six moles of CO2, we need to multiply that value by six. And then we're gonna add, notice we're gonna sum, sum here, the heat of formation of water. But again, we've got six moles of water, and so we need to multiply the heat of formation of water by six. So we've set up to solve for the total heats of formation of our products. We need to do the same thing with our reactants. Notice from my reactant here, I've got two moles of C3H6, which has a heat of formation of 20.9 kilojoules per mole. Now, as I look, my only other reactant here is oxygen, but I'm not given my oxygen in this list. Oh no! You have to remember that if you are ever given an element in its standard state, that it's enthalpy of formation is zero. So although this is gonna be unnecessary, I'm gonna write it out anyway, nine moles times zero kilojoules, mole, boom. So you simply set up the sum of your heats of your formation of products, the sum of the heats of formation of your reactants, and then you subtract the sum of the heats of formation of your reactants from the sum of the heats of formation of your products. Calculator times, negative 4,077 kilojoules. For my reactants, the sum is 41.8 kilojoules. So the enthalpy change for this reaction is 4,120 kilojoules of energy released. Exothermic, boom, we are done. Okay, problem number nine, very similar. Use this formula again, except notice that this time we're actually given what the enthalpy change for the reaction is. So as you read this problem carefully, we are in fact asked to determine this time the heat of formation of carbon tetrachloride. Boom, this thing right here. So same formula, just solving for something a little bit differently. First thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna plug in the enthalpy change for the reaction, which is negative 389 kilojoules. I'm gonna to sum together the enthalpies of formation of my products. My first product here, CCL4, that is what I'm looking for. So it's one mole times X plus four moles times negative 92. Okay, so those are my products. I'm gonna do the same thing with my reactants. I'm gonna start with methane. I've got one mole times negative 75 kilojoules per mole. Plus, notice here I've got an element in its standard state, four moles times zero kilojoules. Again, you don't actually have to do that step, but I'm just writing it in for clarity. All right, it's algebra time. First, one times X, easy enough, that is just X plus four times negative 92, negative 368. Next, we do the same thing for our products, one times negative 75, we get negative 75. Okay, now I'm just gonna clean up some of my signs here. This is gonna really be X minus 368 kilojoules. And since we're minusing a negative here, we're really gonna plus this. So I'm gonna subtract 75 from each side. So at negative 464 kilojoules equal to X minus 368. We then add 368 to each side. Boom, X is equal to negative 96 kilojoules. That is the heat of formation of our carbon tetrachloride. So similar type problem, you're still using this equation, except you are just gonna solve for a different part of it. 